back to the channel guys, hope everyone's doing well. So today we're gonna to be talking about the MacBook Pro M1, so the Apple Silicon MacBook Pro, and using that with a super low latency audio interface, so the PreSonus 2626, which at the moment is right there, but we're gonna skip back to the unboxing and getting this set up and see how it actually works. So the PreSonus 2626 is a eight in, eight output, super low latency interface. It's got no frills, no bells and whistles really, it's just kind of a straightforward interface. Why would I want to use that in this day and age? Do we care about latency and all that sort of thing? You know, because I love playing with hardware, touching buttons, twiddling with knobs, all that sort of thing. I want to be able to tightly integrate this gear into my mostly digital setup with my door. So one of the problems with using hardware synths in a sort of door environment is that, you know, software synths are much more flexible. You can kind of, you know, tweak everything and everything stays where it's supposed to. It's in the box. So basically, you know, when you reopen your project, everything's where you left it. There's no issues. Presets get reloaded, all the same things. Not the case with kind of this kind of gear. So you end up having to reload stuff. So why would you want to do it? Some of these synths sound better, I think, than um, the VSTs. There are VSTs that sound as good or better in some cases, but it's just nice to have the choice. And I like playing keys, obviously I'm a musician, so that's what I'm, I'm more familiar with. So you can combine the two, you basically just record these synths into the computer like you would do any other instrument, like a guitar or anything like that. Now to do that, you're gonna to have to have an audio interface on your computer that allows you to record in all of this stuff, all of this external gear um, without any delay, without any latency. Otherwise, you're going to be finding that things aren't sounding tight. Everything needs to be shifted around on your on your DAW, and it just it's just a it's just a nightmare for your workflow, basically. So the PreSonus Quantum Twenty Six Twenty Six is supposed to solve this problem by giving you a super low latency um, audio interface, which runs on Thunderbolt Three. There's not very many devices that run on Thunderbolt 3, which the new M1 Mac has. Now the M1 Mac, as I mentioned before, is an incredible bit of kit. It's an incredible computer, as I keep saying, um, because I was never that fond on Intel, and that's a whole nother story, mainly to do with you know my, my background being in ARM computers and ARM Linux. The performance is amazing. You can just flip open the lid. The computer starts right away. Projects like this I'm working on, I can work on outside. It's got a six hour battery life. You know, the list of kind of pros for this computer go on and on. There are some drawbacks um, and that is down to compatibility. And that brings me on to why I've chosen this particular interface is because PreSonus are very good at making drivers for the new operating systems and everything else on the Mac. So they have actually created a proper driver for the new M1 Max, and it's supposed to work really well. So we're gonna give it a test. Here we go then, simple interface. Um, it's got dual headphone outputs. We've obviously got these knobs for handling the level of things. It's really simple. And it's 19 inch rack, which is nice. It'll fit in my um, you know, rack unit space. Uh, we've got MIDI on there as well, which is useful because the other one's got MIDI. Um, Thunderbolt interface. You don't get a Thunderbolt cable, I don't think, no. So basically, you've got to use your own, which is a bit weird. I mean, for something of this value, right, really, they should be giving you a Thunderbolt lead, but hey ho. So yeah, we'll get it plugged in. It should be pretty straightforward. As with all these things, it never is. Right, so as with all new studio hardware, it doesn't go where it's supposed to until you know it works. Um, <laughs> always the way. Um, so I've got my Thunderbolt 3 cable, which basically just goes into that little hub there and then that is a proper Thunderbolt 3 hub, that one. Um, and it goes into this computer. And then obviously one one of these is used for running that screen. It tries to keep screens and stuff on their own out. But you only get two on this Mac, so it is a little bit of a pain. Um, but, so it's all on. It's not on, actually, because there's a switch around the back. I'm not going to turn it on until I've installed the drivers. There are drivers um, available for Big Sur, which is what I'm using on this Mac. So, yeah, I've downloaded those already, actually. So I should be able to just run that installer and um, get it get it installed. Firewire driver done on that. PreSonus Universal Control. Let's go for it. Get it installed. Yeah, whatever. Thunderbolt driver. That's the one we want. Install. System extension blocked, which is the standard crap that you have to deal with now on a Mac OS. So all this does come at a bit of an ex. Um, expense. Right, so we can double check that security and privacy thing there. Um, right, open that. 
and then we go allow and then it's asking for passwords it's a bit of a mess all this really um a restart is required okay we'll do that then one thing about this is, is it does boot up super quick so there is something that go and find a video about this because there isn't there's an extension thing basically you can just reduce the level of security um to make things a bit easier and that is what i have actually done it must be quite a complex driver right anyway it looks like it's done done it let's fire the interface on i'll quickly check to see if it's actually showing as a sound device for like mac os before going to my door nothing showing hmm so I got a little notification up just after I turned the camera, I forgot a little notification that said can't use that uh, Thunderbolt accessory. Um, so I think what it's referring to is this because I've just plugged it into directly into the Mac and it's coming up now, Quantum 2626. So yeah, looks like you can't use this um, it via that. So I'm going to have to plug my monitor into there and see if I can do it that way. But let's just first see if it works anyway. Um, I've got a blue light on there, so that's fine. So just going to open my projects in Logic and just see. Oh, okay. So that just that just crashed. So you see, you know, you do get a few little glitches here and there. Um, but you know, I've never had it. I've not had a crash where I've lost anything. Um, there are a few little anomalies here and there. But anyway, let's try and select output. Of the 2626 and the input 2626 okay and they reckon you can set a buffer size of 32 okay so i've selected like a buffer size of 32 i'm getting two milliseconds latency which is something <laughs> um i thought it might be less than that well 1.1 millisecond output okay so it is yeah it's, it's definitely definitely better um, I think this one's running on something like 18 or something like that. Right, so all plugged into the main out and um, I can actually play this and see. Yeah, that seems to be working. So let's just play something else. Sounds good. What about the latency though? So move it onto a track with some MIDI on it. Is pretty damn good and that's doing it with a 32 sample buffer size um, and I think my recording delay was set wrong I just set it to zero but, but the real test is going to be to have some analog audio coming out of one of these keyboards going into directly into this interface into the computer processing with like external plugins and then back out again um, so that's going to be the interesting one that's what I want to do I want to have a zero as close to zero latency so you know I can actually use um, the computer to process like all the effects and stuff from external sims and record them without any sort of delay and having a ball lake like moving things around because there's latency um, so it's looking quite good so far 1.1 millisecond on the output right so next day now guys and I've been playing around with the interface and I can say I'm pretty impressed so I've got it in here in the rack behind Looks pretty nice behind there. Um, and I've got a few pieces of hardware that I've kind of rigged up so far just on the analog inputs. So I've got my Wardorf Blofeld here and I've got some analog audio outs going out of there and coming into the interface. And I've also got my System 1 rigged up as well. So that's coming out of just normal audio outputs. This will do USB audio, but not for this, for this setup. I'm just using it um, as kind of analog outputs. And I've made this little project to sort of demonstrate things. So we've got three inputs you can see here, and these are all being monitored live. So effectively what you're hearing is basically the audio coming in through these cables and then going into the computer and back out again. This is the whole point of having a really low latency interface so that you can actually do that. And um, you can hear, I might have to turn the filter up on that. You know, so there you have a system one and on this channel we've got a bunch of plugins so we've actually got a compressor we've got chroma verb reverb uh, we've got EQ and we've got an LFO tool as well so we've got quite a lot going on and you can see the EQ so this is the thing the raw sound from this probably isn't going to be suitable on its own you're going to need to do quite a bit of 
engineering to the sound to actually get it to sit right in the mix. And not to mention sidechain as well, which you obviously can't do with outboard unless you run it into a, a separate compressor. So this is the project so far. So we've got kick drum coming from the TR8S. Sounds nice and fat and punchy. Um, we've also got some other bits of percussion coming from there as well. Um, I think I might have muted those ones. But yeah, things like just a simple 909 open, I think, are on there. And we've got like our main riff coming from obviously the System 1, which we talked about. We've also got a bass line, which is coming from the Blofeld. So, nice little sound there. And we've also got some extra audio clips coming from the computer itself. Just for little build-up sort of sounds. And I've actually got a Spire plugin, the Spire Synth plugin on that channel there to show that you can, you know, run the um, the synths and VSTs and outboard and all everything together and it's all synced nicely. So for those that are a little bit bewildered what's actually going on here, all we're doing is we're triggering MIDI data to each of the individual synths, so the blow for the system one over there and um, obviously the, this drum machine, and we're just sending the MIDI data to there and then just getting the audio back into the computer on these three channels at the top. So in order to make my track kind of portable and be able to work on it on the laptop on its own without using the gear, I'm going to have to record all this stuff as audio. So this is how I'm going to do it. I'll actually perform the track. Um, well, I say perform it, but what I'm, all I'm really going to do is just be doing this filter in real time up here. Um, and then I'll just record it into the computer and we can just scrap the MIDI data. If it works, we can just scrap all the MIDI data and we'll just be dealing with audio in the, um, in the door. So I'm going to set my audio channels to record each one is set to record. So we're recording three of them simultaneously and um, we'll hit go and see what happens. There we go, we've got the audio. Now, what we should be able to do is mute all of the MIDI parts. So take all the MIDI parts away, apart from the MIDI part for our virtual instrument, Spire. So we'll leave that in and the sound effects. And so the whole track should actually play. Let's see if it's in time. Sounds pretty good to me. So that is how it's done with that interface and that solves the problem because I couldn't do that before, it was out of time, I was getting latency issues, um, I had to shift audio backwards and forwards. So that shows you that an interface like this can actually really help you if you want to combine hardware and software together. So now I can actually, I can actually bounce that as an audio file um, and then I can use that in the video so you guys can actually hear a high quality version, which you've actually already heard because I put it over the top of the section while I was re-recording it. So there you go guys, that's how you do it. That's how you combine outboard gear like external synths with VSTs and use audio from your door as well. So using everything, you know, using the best of all worlds. And also what's really cool is you can monitor everything in real time. So you can add plugins and things that you can't obviously on external synthesizers, they don't have that sort of level of effects 
detail. You can sound design sounds live in real time and don't commit to them until you're actually completely ready to render them out as audio. So that is really cool. Live processing made possible by a super low latency interface and obviously this new M1 Mac. So I hope you found this useful guys. Next up, I think I'm gonna try this with Ableton Live. That should be quite interesting. Catch you later.